Welcome to lecture number 16 on measure and integration. If you recall in the previous lecture, we had started looking at the notion of measurable functions on measure spaces. We will continue that study of uh, measurable functions and their properties and then we will specialize measurable functions on measure spaces and then we will uh, look at the uh, space of measurable functions on when x is real line and the sigma algebras are either Borel sigma algebra or Lebesgue sigma algebra. And if there is a time, uh, we will start looking at the integration of uh, non-negative simple measurable functions. So, let us recall what we had been doing. We had been looking at properties of measurable functions. So, that is what we will be continuing doing. Then we will look at measurable functions on measure spaces, look at Borel and Lebesgue measurable functions and then look at integral of non-negative simple measurable functions. So, let us just recall what we had done regarding uh, measurable functions. We had said that if x s is a measurable space and f is a function from x to r star, then saying that f is measurable, f measurable, it is same as saying the inverse image of every interval i belongs to s for every interval i contained in s. And there were equivalent ways of defining uh, measurability in terms of uh, special intervals uh, like this, uh, this is same as if and only if f inverse of uh, intervals of the type c to infinity uh, belong to s for every c belonging to r and so on. So, um, we'll, and then uh, we looked at what is called the algebra of measurable functions. We proved that if f 1 and f 2 are measurable, then f 1, f 2 measurable implies f 1 plus f 2 is measurable implies f 1 into f, um, f 2 is measurable and so on. So, uh, today we will look at the properties of uh, sequences of measurable functions. So, we want to prove the following namely look at a sequence f n of measurable functions, then look at uh, the function what is called the maximum of f n. So, this is a function denoted by v n equal to 1 to infinity f n of x is defined as the maximum of f n of x n bigger than or equal to 1. So, uh, this is uh, called the maximum of the sequence f n and similarly, uh, we have the notion of a minimum of f n uh, which is denoted by wedge 1 to infinity f n x uh, equal to minimum. So, this is uh, this is extra. So, that is the definition. So, uh, claim is that if f n is a sequence of measurable functions, then the maximum and the minimum are also measurable functions. So, let us uh, prove this. So, f n is defined on x to r star and f n is measurable for every n bigger than or equal to 1. And we define the maximum n equal to 1 to infinity of f n of x to be equal to maximum of f n x n bigger than or equal to 1. So, this is the definition of this uh, maximum and we want to prove to show that this function v n equal to 1 to infinity f n, this is measurable. So, to prove that, uh, we can use any one of those conditions which we had defined earlier uh, for measurability. So, let us look at maximum n equal to 1 to infinity f n of inverse of uh, the interval, uh, let us look at uh, uh, say c to infinity. Okay. So, that, that means what? That means, this is all x belonging to x such that n equal to 1 to infinity f n of x is bigger than or equal to c. So, um, 
uh, to prove this, now we have to convert somehow this relation into individual f n's because each individual f n is measurable. So, that uh, seems uh, this saying the maximum is bigger than or equal to c that means, um, at least one of them uh, crosses over c. So, that is one way of doing it, but let us look at uh, uh, the uh, equivalent uh, criteria namely let us look at the sets f n inverse the maximum is less than or equal to c. So, that is equal to minus infinity so to c let us look at that. So, this is same as x belonging to x is that the maximum value f n x is less than c. Now, if maximum of something is less than c, then each one of them has to be less than c. So, that is uh, the reason instead of using this uh, uh, kind of intervals, it is more convenient for the maximum to use this kind of intervals, because then this set can be written as intersection n equal to 1 to infinity of x belonging to x such that f n x is less than c. So, this is uh, each uh, 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 may be uh, uh, this may not be exactly true. So, let us take it uh, this close because uh, uh, maximum less than or equal to c uh, then every one of them will be less than or equal to c that is ok. So, it uh, so we look at the intervals of the type minus infinity c close and that is intersection of uh, the sets and each one of these sets belong to the sigma algebra s because each f n is given to be measurable. So, it is the intersection of elements in the sigma algebra. So, this uh, uh, set also belongs to the sigma algebra s. So, that means, the, this proves the fact that the maximum of f n is a measurable function. A similar proof uh, will work for uh, the minimum. So, let us look at the wedge n equal to 1 to infinity f n that is defined as the minimum of uh, f n x, um, f n x for n bigger than or equal to 1. So, claim is that this is a measurable function. So, once again for any uh, c belonging to r, let us look at the minimum, uh, minimum of f n, n equal to 1 to infinity inverse of uh, some interval, some type of intervals uh, we want to show it in belongs to S. So, uh, let us uh, try looking at uh, minimum is uh, minimum of this is bigger than C. So, let us try this. So, this is all X uh, belonging to X such that the minimum of f n X n bigger than or equal to 1 is bigger than or equal to c. So, if the minimum of some certain numbers is bigger than or equal to c, then each one of them has to be bigger than or equal to c, because if even if 1 is smaller, then the minimum will become smaller. So, this is equal to intersection of n equal to 1 to infinity of all x belonging to x such that f n x is bigger than or equal to c. So, that implies and this is nothing but intersection n equal to 1 to infinity of f n inverse of uh, c to plus infinity. And each f n being measurable, this is the measurable set. So, it implies that this is a set uh, in S. So, we have proved that if um, f n is a sequence of uh, measurable functions, then we look at the maximum or the minimum of the sequence of this measurable functions, then that uh, both of them are again measurable functions. So, as a consequence of this, we prove that the limit of uh, measurable functions is also a measurable function. So, that is our next aim to prove that the limit of measurable functions is also a measurable function. So, for that, let us understand what is the limit of a function. So, let us look at a sequence f n the sequence f n of functions, each f n is defined from x to uh, star. So, to define the notion of limit of f n at a point x, what we do is for every x belonging to x, let us look at uh, the maximum or the supremum 
of f n x for n greater than or equal to uh, some stage m. So, this number the supremum that depends on m and then we take the infimum over all m's. Okay. So, this is supremum first take the supremums and then take the infimums. This gives you a function this is called limit uh, superior of f n at the point x. So, this is called the limit superior of the function uh, the sequence of functions f n x at the point x. Similarly, limit inferior of f n x is so limit inferior is defined as you first take the infimums of f n x for n greater than or equal to some stage m and then look at the supremum for all m bigger than or equal to 1. This is called the limit superior and you must have seen in your elementary analysis classes that limit superior of f n x is always bigger than or equal to limit inferior of f n x. So, this inequality always holds and the sequence f n f n x converges to f x if and only if limit superior f n x is equal to f of x is equal to limit inferior of f n of x. So, these are elementary facts from uh, basic analysis uh, about when is a sequence uh, of real numbers convergent. So, it says that a sequence for any sequence of uh, real numbers or extended real numbers you can define the concept of limit superior and also you can define the concept of limit inferior. Limit superior is defined by looking at the supremums of the sequence a n from some stage m onwards and then this supremum depends on m. So, look at the infimum of all these supremums. So, that is called the limit superior and similarly limit inferior is defined as first taking the infimums of the sequence f n x from some stage m uh, onwards and then looking at the supremums of uh, these numbers which depend on m and uh, one uh, proves that the limit superior of a sequence of, uh, is always bigger than or equal to limit inferior and the sequence is convergent if and only if the limit superior is equal to limit inferior. So, in case you have not come across these concepts, I strongly suggest that you pick up a book uh, on elementary analysis and revise the concepts of limit superior and uh, limit inferior. So, we are going to use that fact now here to prove that f is measurable. So, what is f? f of x is nothing but limit superior and limit inferior. So, why is limit? Uh, so, only thing to show is that the limit superior and limit inferior are both uh, measurable functions, but limit superior of f n is nothing but first taking the supremums of f n x from n bigger than or equal to m and then taking any infimums m bigger than or equal to 1. And just now we have shown that if f n is a sequence of functions, then the supremums, the maximums are also measurable functions. So, this is a measurable function, infimums of measurable functions that is a measurable function. So, this implies that limit superior f n is measurable. And similarly, limit inferior f n is measurable. And saying that f n converges to f is same as saying this f is equal to limit superior f n or also equal to limit inferior of f n. So, that proves the fact that f n converges to f for every point x implies and f n is measurable implies f is a measurable function. So, limits of measurable functions are also measurable uh, functions. So, this proves the theorem uh, 
that the class of all measurable functions is nice, it is closed under taking point wise limits. Now, let us uh, uh, observe that most of these properties uh, hold for extended real valued functions also when properly uh, defined. So, uh, because the only thing to observe is the following that if f and g are extended real valued functions, and you want to define f plus g, a care has to be taken because f of you will like to define it as f of x plus g of x, right? But the problem comes. The problem comes if f of x is equal to plus infinity and g of x is equal to minus infinity, then what will be this number that is not defined or f of x is equal to minus infinity and uh, g of x is equal to plus infinity. Even then the problem comes this number is not defined. So, what one does is to um, meaning saying suitably defined means look at all the points call this set as A, where all x belonging to x, where either of these things happen, where f x equal to plus infinity, g x is equal to minus infinity or f x equal to minus infinity and g x equal to plus infinity. Now, one observes that this set A is in the sigma algebra. Okay, because f x is equal to plus infinity belongs to sigma algebra intersection with that belongs to sigma algebra. So, all these sets all this set A is in the sigma algebra. So, A is the set on which the problem can come. So, what one does is one defines f plus g of x to be equal to f x plus g x. If x does not belong to A and if x belongs to A you can define it any number alpha if x belongs to A. So, with this definition it is easy to observe. So, let me leave it as exercise for you to show that if I define it this way with alpha any value on the set A then f plus g is um, s measurable. So, that is what uh, uh, I mean by saying that, that the above results most of these properties hold for extended real valued functions also when uh, uh, those functions are appropriately defined. So, we will not uh, go much into detail of this, uh, one can easily verify these things. So, let us uh, uh, look at f and g to be uh, another property of measurable functions uh, is the following. Let us look at uh, two functions f and g which are uh, uh, measurable, then the following holds. The look at the sets x belonging to x say that where f x is bigger than g x or the set x belonging to x where f x is strictly less than g x or x belonging to x where f x is equal to g x and similarly where f x is bigger than or equal to or f x is less than or equal to. So, all these type of sets are claim is are in the sigma algebra s. So, let us uh, look at the proof of one of them and uh, others will follow uh, similarly. So, f and g are functions x to r star measurable. Let us look at the set x belonging to x such that f of x is strictly less than g of x. And so, our aim is to show that this belongs to the sigma algebra S. And since we are given f and g are both measurable, we are given the property that f x less than or equal to some real number is belongs to the sigma algebra and similarly, g x less than or equal to uh, a real number belong to the sigma algebra. So, objective is try to interpret this set in terms of union intersections of something of sets of the type where f x is less than something and g x is less than something. So, for that we observe that for any x if f of x is less than g x then there must be a rational number in between them. So, 
for every x belonging to x there exists a rational r such that f x is less than r is less than g x. So, here we are using the fact that rationals are dense on the real line. So, with this property we can write x belonging to x say that f x is less than g x. So, this implies that uh, x belonging to x say that for some rational f x is less than r is less than g x right for some. And conversely, if for some r this is true, then obviously f x is equal to g x. So, claim is this is equal to union over r belonging to rational numbers. Okay. So, this is the uh, uh, only uh, crucial point in this that the set f x less than g x can be written as a union over all rationals such that f x strictly less than r strictly less than g x. And now, observe this set is an intersection. So, I can write it as r belonging to q. The, this set is where f x is less than r and g x is bigger than r. So, it is x belonging to x say so that f x less than r intersection with the set x belonging to x say so that g x is bigger than r. Okay. So, what we have done? We have interpreted the set x belonging to x say so that f x less than g x as so, let us just uh, look at the set again. So, this is union over r. So, that is equal to union over r belonging to q. What is this set? This is f inverse of f x less than r that is less than r means it is um, uh, minus infinity to r. And the second set is the in nothing but g inverse of g x bigger than r. So, it is r plus infinity. So, this is so the set f x less than g x is written as union over rationals intersections of these two sets. Now, f and g being measurable this set belongs to the sigma algebra g being measurable this set belongs to the sigma algebra it is intersection. So, the whole set belongs to the sigma algebra intersection belongs to the sigma algebra and rationals are countable. So, this is a countable union of elements in the sigma algebra. So, this belongs to the sigma algebra. So, what we have shown is the set x belonging to x that f x strictly less than g x belongs to the uh, sigma algebra s. So, that proves the first required property of the theorem. Now, if you take just the complement of this set. So, also implies that x belonging to x such that f x less than g x the complement of this set what will be that. So, that is all x belonging to x say that f x is bigger than or equal to g x. So, that set also uh, belongs to the sigma algebra right and similarly uh, the argument which we will uh, similarly um, we said that f x less than g x belongs to it. So, let us write x belonging to x say that f x is strictly bigger than g x is also in the sigma algebra because by similar arguments I can write this as the union over all rationals of f inverse of uh, so f x bigger than. So, that will be r plus infinity in uh, intersection with g inverse of minus infinity to r. So, by a similar argument where we had f x less than again we can inter f x is bigger than g x. So, there must be a rational in between. So, that must be true and that will imply that this belongs to the sigma algebra. So, saying that f x bigger than g x belong to the sigma algebra is ok. And if you take the complement of this that is nothing but x belonging to x so that f x less than or equal to g x. 
So, that also belongs to the sigma algebra, because this is the complement of the set in the sigma algebra. So, measurable sets have nice properties, namely if f and g are measurable, then uh, operations involving measurable sets, uh, measurable functions give you again sets in the sigma algebra. So, these are nice properties and we will see uh, use of these properties uh, soon. So, this, with this we complete the pro, uh, study of uh, measurable functions on uh, measurable functions on uh, measure, measurable spaces. Next, we are going to look at uh, measurable functions, which are defined on measure spaces. So, they play also a play a, a role later on. So, we want to define, we want to look at functions f, which are defined on a set x, taking extended real values, uh, uh, values and on x, there is a sigma algebra s and a measure mu given on s. So, let us first define what is the meaning of the notion of almost everywhere. So, we say that a property p about the points of x is said to hold almost everywhere with respect to the measure mu. If you look at the set of points x for which the property p does not hold at x. So, look at all those points of x say that the property p does not hold at the point x. So, this is a subset and we want this subset belongs to the sigma algebra and mu of e is equal to 0. So, what we are saying is um, except for a set of measure 0, the property holds. So, that is why we give it a name that the property p holds almost everywhere with respect to the measure mu. Let, it, let me illustrate this with some examples. Let us take a function f and we look at the statement that f is 0 almost everywhere. So, f is a function which is extended function defined on the set x and we want to say that this uh, function is 0 almost everywhere. So, look at the set of points where f is not 0. So, what will that statement mean? That set where f is non-zero should be an element in the sigma algebra and its measure should be 0. So, x belonging to x say that f of x is not 0 that should be element in the sigma algebra and its measure. So, measure of can be defined only when the set is in the sigma algebra. So, mu of that set is equal to 0. So, that is the so the statement that f is equal to 0 almost everywhere will mean mu of measure of the set of points where f x is not 0 is 0. Let us look at another illustration of this. The statement that f is finite almost everywhere, what will that mean? So, that, that will mean look at the set of points where f is not finite, that means what? f is extended real value function. So, it can take the value plus infinity or minus infinity. So, the set of points x belonging to x say that mod f x is equal to plus infinity. So, that is same as where either f of x is plus infinity or f of x is equal to minus infinity. That set is in the sigma algebra and mu of that set is equal to 0. So, saying a function f is finite almost everywhere means the set of points where it can take the values plus infinity or minus infinity is a set of measure 0. Similarly, let us look at two functions f and g okay. and let us look at uh, the statement that f is strictly bigger than g almost everywhere. So, f is strictly bigger than g almost everywhere, what will that statement mean? That means, the set of points where f x is not strictly bigger than and that is the same as the set of points where f x is less than or equal to g x. So, the complement of that statement is f x less than or equal to g x, these set of points have got measure 0. So, saying that f x is strictly bigger than g almost everywhere with respect to mu means mu of the set where this statement is not true and that is f x less than or equal to g x is 0. This concept of almost uh, everywhere uh, is quite useful uh, when looking at measurable functions. So, let us uh, prove the property that if f and g are two extended valued functions say that f x is equal to g x almost everywhere mu, then 
measurability of one of the functions f implies the measurability of the other function g. So, f is measurable, s measurable if and only if g is s measurable. So, let us prove this property that if two functions are equal almost everywhere, then the measurability uh, is not changed. One in measurability of 1. So, let us look at f is from x to r star, g is also from x to r star and we know that the set of points x belonging to x such that f x not equal to g x, this set has mu measure equal to 0. So, let us suppose f is s measurable. Okay. To show g is s measurable. So, to show that g is s measurable, let us look at g inverse of any interval i. Okay. So, g inverse for every interval i, i a interval in r star. Then g inverse of i, we want to show that, so claim is that this belongs to s for every interval i. Okay. And now, we have, we have to transform this property, this set into something regarding g. So, let us uh, regarding f. So, let us look at g inverse of i is same as all x belonging to x such that g x belongs to i. Okay. So, this is a subset of the set x. So, what I can do? I can write this set as, so g inverse of i, I can write as intersection of so, x belonging to x say that g x belongs to i and intersected with the set A. Also, union so intersect with A complement. So, g inverse of i I have intersected with A and A complement. So, it is a union of these two sets x belonging to x say that g of x belongs to i intersection A complement. Right. Now, let us look at, uh, let, now let us look at the first set. So, this is g x belonging to y intersection A and what was the uh, set A? What is the set A? Where A is the set x belonging to x where f x is not equal to g x. Okay. F x. So, let us observe we are given we are given that mu of a equal to 0. So, that automatically implies that a belongs to a belongs to the sigma algebra s and that automatically implies that the set x belonging to x say that g x belongs to i intersection a also belongs to the sigma algebra. So, this set also belongs to the sigma algebra. Why? Because this is a subset of A and A is a set of measure 0. So, this is a set of measure 0 and we have already assumed our measure spaces are complete. So, because of, so the implies this is so because uh, the measure space x s mu is complete. So, we have made the assumption that we are working on complete measure spaces. So, that gives the, the that uh, shows the importance of uh, complete measure spaces. So, this set belongs to A and the other part A complement on A complement f is equal to g. So, I can replace it by A complement. So, the set x belonging to x say that g x belongs to I intersection A complement is same as the set x belonging to x where f x belongs to y intersection a complement because on a complement f is equal to g. So, that means what? So, g inverse of i 
is written as G inverse of I intersection A. So, let us just rewrite this uh, statement again. So, what we are saying is G inverse of I can be written as G inverse of I intersection A union G inverse of I intersection A complement and that is same as G inverse of I intersection A union F inverse of I intersection A complement because on A complement F is same as G and this is a set of measure 0 mu of this set is equal to 0. So, implies that this set G inverse of I intersection A belongs to the sigma algebra and this set F is measurable. So, implies this set is in the sigma algebra A is in the sigma algebra. So, A complement in the sigma algebra intersection in the sigma algebra. So, this element belongs to the sigma algebra. So, and this is a union of two elements in the sigma algebra. So, this implies that G inverse of I also belongs to the sigma algebra S. So, we have shown F measurable F equal to G almost everywhere mu implies G measurable. So, that is the importance of uh, measurable uh, uh, functions equal almost everywhere, but keep in mind we have used the fact that underlying measure space is a uh, uh, is a complete uh, measure space. So, uh, measurable functions that means this pro, this says that if f is measurable you can change its values on a set of mu measure 0 and still the function will remain measurable. So, another interpretation of this result is if f is measurable and is you change its values on a set of measure 0 and call that function as g. So, that is measurable. So, that is a quite an important uh, fact. Another application of uh, this concept of almost everywhere is the following. Look at the sequence f n, uh, a sequence of measurable functions converging to a, a function f almost everywhere. That is the set of points where f x is not equal to the limit has got uh, this set, this set has got measure 0 then the claim is then the f is also measurable. So, just now we proved that uh, if a sequence f n of measurable functions converges to f then f is measurable and now we are saying that if f n are defined on a complete measure space and f n converges to f almost everywhere even then this property remains true. So, basically the idea is same as before. So, let us just uh, look at uh, uh, how, how does one write a proof of this statement. So, we have got a complete measure space x s mu measure space, we have got a sequence f n of functions f n s measurable, f n s converge to f almost everywhere mu. So, that means, look at the set A x belonging to x says that f n of x does not converge to f of x. Then what is given to us is that this set A belongs to the sigma algebra and mu of A is equal to 0. Right? So, now let us look at, so we want to show that f is measurable to show f is measurable. So, once again look at for any interval i look at f inverse of i. So, I can write as f inverse of i intersection a union f inverse of i intersection a complement. Right? Now, on a, so we are given a is a set of measure 0. This, so, this is a subset of a so, that has set up measure 0. So, this implies that f inverse of i intersection a belongs to the sigma algebra S, because this is a set of measure 0 and our underlying measure space is complete. And on this portion a complement f n is converging to f. So, this f I can write as limit n going to infinity of f n inverse of i intersection a complement. So, this set is same as this. Okay. And now, we know that f n uh, on a f n converge to f on a complement. 
So, that is a measurable set. Okay. So, this this is a element in the sigma algebra, because on a complement f n is converging. So, if we restrict ourselves to a complement, then that must be element in the sigma algebra. So, both belong to the sigma algebra. So, this belongs to the sigma algebra S. So, um, the concept of almost everywhere uh, when dealing with the complete measure spaces, we can uh, exploit that property. So, this implies that if f n is a sequence of uh, uh, measurable functions converging to a function f almost everywhere, then the limit also is a measurable function. So, uh, this uh, emphasizes uh, the property of something holding almost everywhere. Now, let us specialize uh, the case when our underlying measure space is uh, uh, set is the real line, then we have got two sigma algebras when x is equal to real line, then we have got two sigma algebras, one is the Borel sigma algebra and other is the sigma algebra of Lebesgue measurable sets. And we have shown that the sigma algebra of Borel subsets is a subclass of uh, Lebesgue measurable sets. So, when we are looking at functions defined on real line look, uh, taking values as extended real numbers, there are two possibilities to analyze whether the function is measurable with respect to the Borel sigma algebra or measurable with respect to the Lebesgue sigma algebra. So, there are two notions of measurability as far as um, real line is concerned and uh, so, we will uh, separate them out. So, we will say a function is Lebesgue measurable if the inverse image of every interval in R star is a Lebesgue measurable set. So, if the inverse image of every interval in R star is a element in is a Lebesgue measurable set, then we will say that function is Lebesgue measurable and we will say a function is Borel measurable if for every interval in R star we will pull back its image, its pre image in R is a Borel set in R. So, here is the difference Lebesgue measurable requires that the inverse image is in the Lebesgue sigma algebra, sigma algebra of Lebesgue measurable sets and f inverse of i in B R says it is the inverse image is everywhere uh, is always a Borel set in R. So, obvious because Borel subsets form a subset of R. So, it obviously clear that every Borel measurable function is also a Lebesgue measurable function, right? Because inverse image of every interval if it is in B R and B R is a subset of L R. So, every Borel measurable uh, function is also a Lebesgue measurable function. For example, let us look at a function which is continuous. So, if f r to r is continuous function, then it is going to be a Borel function. So, let us prove that every continuous function is a Borel measurable function and hence also uh, Lebesgue measurable. So, f is a function which is defined from x uh, sorry x is real line. So, f is a function defined from r to r and f is continuous. claim that f is Borel measurable. That is f inverse of any set E belongs to B R for every uh, for every set uh, say E belonging to B R. And continuity of a function can be expressed in terms of open sets. So, let us look at the class A of all subsets E belonging to B R such that this property is true f inverse of E belongs to B R. So, what you have to show to show saying that f inverse of E belongs to B R for every E in B R it is an equivalent to saying to show that this A is equal to B R. right? And that is where um, we are going to use our sigma algebra technique. So, to show that A is equal to B R, note that A is already a subclass of B R, right? because of we are picking up sets in B R. So, to show that A is equal to B R, we have to show that B R is inside A. 
So, for that we will show two steps one open sets are contained in A and second we will show that A is a sigma algebra. Because once A is a, a sigma algebra and includes open sets, it must include the smallest sigma algebra generated by open sets that is B R. So, B R will be inside A and will be true. So, to prove these two facts are quite obvious because of the given condition. So, one open sets belong to A. So, let U contained in R be open f continuous implies that f inverse of u is open and hence this means f inverse of u belongs to b r. So, what we have shown is if u is open then f inverse of u is in b r. So, that proves so implies that the open sets are inside a and a is a sigma algebra that is uh, uh, more straight forward. So, let us observe empty set is equal to f inverse of empty set and uh, uh, so and r is equal to f inverse of r. So, both belong to uh, a. Okay. So, because uh, empty set and um, uh, the whole space uh, they are equal to this. So, this is obvious empty set and the whole space belong. The second property if E belongs to A that implies F inverse of E belongs to B R and that implies F inverse of E complement belongs to B R and that implies because this set is same as F inverse of E complement okay, that belongs to B R. So, what we have shown is if E belongs to A, then F inverse of E complement belongs to B R and that implies that E complement belongs to A. So, that means E complement. So, the class A includes empty set, includes the whole space, it is closed under complements. So, finally, let us show that it is also closed under countable unions. So, that means, so let us take sets E n belong to A, n bigger than or equal to 1 then look at that means what we are given that f inverse of E n belongs to the sigma algebra B r because the property E n belongs to A means the inverse image is in B r. So, but that implies B r is a sigma algebra that implies union 1 to infinity f inverse of E n belongs to B r. And now, a simple observation that this set is same as f inverse of union E n, n equal to 1 to infinity that belongs to B r. So, we, if E n's belong to A, then f inverse of the union belong to B r. So, that means, the union of n equal to 1 to infinity E n's belong to B r, uh, belongs to A. If E n's belong to A, then f inverse of the union belongs to B r that means, the union belongs to A. Hence, we have shown that A is a sigma algebra of subsets of A and it includes open uh, sets. So, it must include B r and hence this is equal. So, that proves that every continuous function from r to r is Borel measurable and hence it is also Lebesgue measurable. So, all topologically nice functions, continuous functions become uh, Lebesgue measurable on the real line. Let us look at uh, uh, some more uh, properties. So, we showed that every uh, uh, Borel function is Lebesgue measurable. So, there exist functions uh, first of all r to r star which are not uh, Lebesgue measurable. So, to prove that we have to only uh, uh, simply observe that there are sets. Okay. Let us uh, go back and recall that for a uh, function f from r to say r star, let us look at f equal to indicator function of a set A, okay, where A is a subset of x. So, recall chi of A is Lebesgue measurable.
if and only if a belongs to L of r. So, if you can produce a set which is not Lebesgue measurable, then the indicator function will not be Lebesgue measurable. So, the, so the answer to this question does there exist non Lebesgue measurable functions depends upon whether there is non Lebesgue measurable sets. And if you recall, we had proved the fact that the non Lebesgue uh, measurable sets exist, uh, not uh, we, that question is related to uh, basic set theory. So, if we assume axiom of choice then we constructed non Lebesgue measurable sets. So, assuming axiom of choice one can claim that there exist functions which are not uh, Lebesgue measurable. And by the same reasoning one can ask the question do there exist functions uh, which are Borel measurable, but not uh, which are uh, Lebesgue measurable, but not uh, Borel measurable, because every Borel measurable is Lebesgue measurable. So, that means to for that by the same logic again if we pick up a set A, which is Lebesgue measurable, but not a Borel set, then the indicator function of that set is going to be a function, which is going to be Lebesgue measurable, but not Borel measurable. So, these two questions um, that whether there exists non Lebesgue measurable, non Lebesgue measurable functions and whether there exists uh, functions, which are Lebesgue measurable, but not Borel get tied up uh, with the fact that uh, the Lebesgue measurable subsets is a proper subset of power set of R and B R is a proper subset of the Lebesgue measurable sets. So, with that uh, we conclude the study of properties of measurable functions. So, basically let me just recall the measurable functions are functions defined on the underlying set X uh, with properties that the inverse image of every set E in the Borel sigma algebra of extended real numbers the inverse image is again uh, in the sigma algebra uh, on the domain space that is S. So, this is a property about uh, the inverse images of uh, uh, sets being in the sigma algebra S and we will see that how this property plays a role in our further study of study of integration. So, we will do the in the next lecture we will start the notion of integration for measurable functions. Thank you.